So this next one is Founders Day, which I didn't even know about until I started research for this podcast. Um, this, I seem to, I may have seen one trailer for this at some point. I yeah, it's so, really dumb. <laughs> so it's, what's funny is that it actually came out in 2023. It came to, it was released, I think, VOD in 2024. I so, believe so. Yeah. So um, yeah, this was this was one of those where it made the festival circuit, and that's what they're counting as its release date. So Founder Day is a 2023 American slasher film directed by Eric Bloomquist. The screenplay was written by Bloomquist with his brother Carson Bloomquist and stars Naomi Grace, Devin Druid, William Russ, Amy Hargreaves, Catherine Curtin, and Amelia McCarthy. The plot follows the lives of a group of citizens who are pursued and killed by a mysterious mass figure in the middle of a political campaign. The film premiered at the Popcorn Frights Film Festival on August 18, 2023. It was given a limited theatrical release in the U.S. on January 19, 2024 by Dark Sky Films. Founders received mixed reviews from critics. Um, it's 104 minutes, 104 dreadful, fucking boring minutes. Uh, there's no budget listed, and this is a 48 out of 40. So basically, there's a campaign going on for I think mayor in this small woody town. Yep. And hey, Mark, how are we going to shoehorn in an- yet another discussion about the American political system? And in the middle of all of this, there's a slasher running around killing people. At the beginning of the movie, it's established that the one, the one I think, conservative who is running has a gay daughter, and the gay daughter has a girlfriend, and the girlfriend's like, I just like you as a friend. Um, and shortly after that, the gay girl is killed, and we are off and running. And at the end, we, a- along the way, we meet a civics professor of some kind who is just like, I don't participate in any of these things anymore. It's all terrible. Um, the town sort of divides itself between uh conservatives and uh progressives and they are all fighting with each other and it's this is the this is the most ham-fisted commentary about the current state of political discourse um and it devolves into the two candidates trying to murder each other and then they are both murdered by the slasher and the whole thing is revealed to be a plot by the by the gay daughter um who's working no. with the professor right uh, sorry no, i'm wrong Okay. The whole thing is a plot by the civics professor to take power right? because he's in the line of succession for mayorship. right? And what he does is he kind of guides uh, several of these other characters we've met, the two children of the conservative uh, pundit or the conservative candidate and one of the, uh, like the sheriff. And I think there's somebody else involved. Yeah. But he's basically orchestrated this large conspiracy whereby the two mayoral candidates are dead, their kids are dead, the sheriff is dead, and he's like the designated survivor of the mayor of this stupid New England town. Which is really funny because I think there's like a website... I'm actually on it because I remember somebody like like a bunch of us put our names on there. Which you can put yourself in a line of succession where if enough political figures die in the current American government, you can be president. I, I can't remember what year I did this or if it still matters at this point. But if enough people from Joe Biden on down are killed, I could, I could in the line of succession be president. Just hilarious. And the whole point at the end of this stupid thing is, you know what? It was a good thing that this happened. Yep. I can't tell you how dumb this movie is. The first 30 to 40 minutes were actually okay. It's a solid enough setup for a slasher. You got a good enough looking villain. Like the, <coughs> the outfit for the slasher is fine. And he's got a decent weapon. It's a gavel and there's also a spike on the end of it. Like you got a good weapon. You got a decent looking killer. What you don't have is a likable protagonist, which is kind of important. What you don't have is a story to actually tie all this together. And what you don't have is a satisfying conclusion. Right. In short, you don't have a good slasher movie. And boy, do I hold in really low esteem people who screw up slasher movies. (laughs) Just paint by the freaking numbers and you'll get something watchable 90% of the time. But no, we have to spend a bunch of time on this going, wait, would these mayoral candidates have their own children killed because that garners sympathy? Because nothing is more important 
than being the mayor of bumfuck New England. You know, when we talked about, I, I recently rewatched our review of Halloween Kills. And There's my one profanity for the evening, by the way. <laughs> weird that you wasted it here. Um, I'm I not want... going to use it anywhere else. <laughs> I um, I rewatched our review of Halloween Kills, and I said that was that was a commenting on like mob mob justice mob rule and you know th- th- it was commenting on like maga people and basically people who were so disenfranchised so disillusioned with the lack of <laughs> the lack of control any one group of people has in this country anymore um and then just sort of lashing out um violently against other people that's what the movie was trying to talk about. And it chose a horror movie to do it. And I said at the time, and I'll double down on this, at least it's talking about it somewhere. It, you know, it, it, was it the most effective commentary? No. And I said it then, and I will repeat that, but at least it made the commentary. This doesn't even do that. Like this is <laughs> Halloween kills was like, Hey, I, it's not great that we've become so divided as, as a country that you're willing to, you're willing to commit violence against some people who don't agree with you politically, um, morally. There they used to be more of a willingness to tolerate differences in our culture. Now there's almost none. And it's, nowadays, and it's making nowadays things- if you come out and endorse the wrong major candidate from one of the two major political parties in this mm-hmm. country, you're somehow demonized. And bear in mind, I don't care which one. Yeah. If you come out and say, yay, Harris, you're going to get booed by a group of people. If you come out and say, yay, Trump, you're going to get booed by the other group of people. And both seem perfectly willing to excise you from society. Right. And so it's... You're being a person and you become, you, know, you become object- objectified. You know, we tend to associate that sort of thing with sexualization, but you can be objectified in any number of ways. I mean, I, I've talked about this once or twice on various shows we have. Um there's a weird thing the human brain does because one of the only thing the brain does several things, right? The best thing the brain does is categorize. And the only category that really matters this is the first one we learn. Your baby brain does this. It's us and them. Yeah. Now there, hang on. Uh, this is an important subcategory of this. There is no biological or racial or ethnic component to that. Us can be anyone. Them can be anyone. This is demonstrated over and over again in the literature. But there's a thing your brain does with them. And it's a weird thing, but this is true. You stop seeing faces because faces are how we recognize humans. And if you don't recognize the face of another human, it's very easy to do what's necessary to defend yourself from them because they're not us, they're them, and they might hurt you. And when you start getting that cycle going, one, it's very, very hard to break. This is why um, when you this is why, like, how do you reform racists? Genuinely, you get them with someone of the group that they hate and you get them to see them as a person. Right. And that starts at breaking because you no longer see blob. You see them and they become part of us. And that's how that breaks. So we got to move this along. But the problem with Founders Day is that it has an interesting enough premise. It doesn't do anything with it. It is. It's in a, not. It, it's it not a, a bad setup for a yeah. slasher movie. It's just. Well, it's in a big like, giant. Like you said, nothing. It's a big giant rush to get to the slashing, and it's like I. If the pitch is, what if we use the um the discourse in America, the discourse and the discourse in America as the backdrop for our slasher film? Great, I'm with you. Are you going to say anything about the discourse? No. Like this, this film, the message of the film basically is the kind of thing you hear it, from an angry teenager which is burn it all down you know i'd rather well, the, when most teenagers sort of gravitate to either communism or anarchy and the people making this but film you repeat yourself <laughs> and, the, and the people making this film were just like anarchy anarchy is the way to go i don't have any time for this i i lost patience with this movie about 30 minutes in um the, the real problem is, in addition to that, like the message you come away with is, you know, it really is. We, we really all would be better off if a couple of very smart people created and created a secret society me, to suppress all of us. Look, I hate because they know best. I hate like I, I hate, um, you know, uh, sort of stereotyping based on political ideology. But 
and maybe someone else sees it differently. But I do feel like that's such a liberal thing. And that's not me not, not being a liberal, so I'm attacking liberals. This is me making an observation as an objective person. That No, no. Where that like, is a more... That is the modern liberal understanding of that is to seed. You can argue whether or not in some cases this is a good thing or a bad thing that I'm taking a broad statement here. Okay. Then it's not a value judgment. This is an assessment of, but there's a lot of the modern liberal um, political ideology that is the world is too complicated. I cede all authority for all things that I do not know very well to people who have the right pieces of paper. And this yeah. is a very, you know, in some cases, things are infinitely, not infinitely, but they're very, very complicated. And that's not the bad, that's not the worst thing in the world to un, to let experts I, I appreciate, uh, show their expertise. I appreciate intellectuals. I would not want many of them in charge of things. Because also I, very, yeah, there's a reason this is not a way to actually run things. Right. It's a, it's a segment of, it's a segment that needs to be considered and considered very, very carefully. But seeding that i mean for crying out loud the simpsons lampooned this 20 years ago mm -hmm. when they had the intellectuals run the town and it just failed miserably there's just, it never works well i think you know when 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 george washington became president and he developed the idea of the cabinet and instituted a cabinet there was the tacit recognition of i don't have all the answers so i'm gonna have experts sit around me and i'm gonna consult with these experts but i being the president and being a leader will take the best ideas take what I think are the best ideas and the best way to implement them. And that's what I'm going to do, but I'm not just going to cede authority to the intellectuals. Yeah. And that is how this should work. And what founders day is going for is no, 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 no. Throw all that out. Only the smart, only the smartest people, i.e. the people I agree with should be in charge. And that and, is such yeah. a child's way of looking at things that it annoyed the piss out of me. Not to mention the fact that as a film, this has no style and no substance to it. And I really setting aside my fundamental disagreements with the messaging of the finale. I really hate when the finale of a slasher movie makes as little sense as this one, just from a mechanical <laughs> standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also when scream did the multiple murders thing, because they weren't magic and they had to have a plausible explanation yeah. for why he was doing magic. It was great. It was an interesting take on the slasher. Now that every movie is doing multiple killers, I'm over this. Please stop doing it. Find yeah. find another way to make your killer your, your human killer magic. This is ridiculous. Moving on. Yeah, not a good movie.